Okay, before we uh, start talking about the particulars of Git, I thought it would be a good idea to actually go over what we can do with a distributed version control system, because Git is, is a distributed system. And to contrast it to what we've been doing, uh, Subversion is a server-based system. And that's the way version control has been for a while. So let's get a pinned pen here. And so we've got, you know, typically our Subversion server up here. And then we've got a bunch of users all doing their code. And user A changes something and puts it up into Subversion. And then users B, C, and D, in order to get that back down, need to pull stuff down. And let's say D changes something. Now he's got to put his stuff up in the server. And now A, B, and C need to bring the stuff down. And that's the way we've been working for the last couple of years. The distributed system, you have user A starts a project. And he creates his own repository locally. And we'll just leave that circle there representing him and his repository. And now B wants to be part of that project. So B comes over here. And what B does, the first thing B does is he pulls a copy of that repository down. Now B actually has a copy of that repository on his own machine as well as A. And now let's say C wants to jump in on the project. And C can either pull B's repository or he can pull A's repository. Let's say he pulls A's repository. And now A needs to get updates. Now A can pull information from B to get B's changes and he can pull information from C, from C's repository, to get C's changes, and, and those all merge into the repository that A has locally on his machine. And now B can either go pull the changes from C, or he can go pull the changes from A. He can do either one of those. So everybody's got a copy of everybody else's repository, and everything they're doing is local. Now this can get kind of uh, interesting because there's a lot of things that you can do with this. In a big development environment, which of course you know we're not using right now, but to show you the, the power of this, we can have something like this. We've got A, and A is the project owner. And he owns all the code. He's got the most up to date, um, and he's going to keep his system up to date. And then we have B, C, and D are his lieutenants, and they'll all grab code from A, grab code A here. So they've all got their own repositories, their you know whatever changes they're making. Um, but they start out with a copy of A, and they keep up to date with whatever A's got. Now, in a, in a big system, it wouldn't make sense to have 20 people all pulling from A. What we want to do is we want to have B, C, and D be you know, kind of intermediate areas. And so maybe we've got a large project, and B's working on a certain subsystem, and he's got he's the project leader for these guys down here, and we'll call these B, A, BB and BC. And so they all pull from B and make their own changes. And you could do the same thing for C and D. We'll just keep it simple here. Now, B is going to be pulling his code from people that are working from him to keep his system up to date. 
and he's going to be pulling from A to keep the system up to date with whatever the main project is. And then A and B and C can pull from B to keep their data up to date. But the only relationship going on here is between all the Bs. And then the relationship between here is A and all the BCD stuff. And then if A, when A wants to get up to date with what's going on in B, he'll pull from B. And let's just do to make the thing complete, you got the same thing going here. You got the same thing going here. So you can have a very large system, and even a larger system, we could just keep taking this out, right? So we got. So you can have an extremely large project. And this is actually what's being done uh, with the Linux kernel. You've got people all over the world working on it. It's a super huge project, but Linus is only pulling from three or four people that he really trusts, and it's their responsibility to make sure that the code that they've got is code that has somehow been vetted and uh, is, is actually working. So he's not pulling from just anybody. It really simplifies the process. Now, there's a couple different ways of setting this up. One of the other systems, you know, you're working in a distributed environment, you don't all aren't all able to connect, but that's you know what I've shown you is a basic premise for the system. If you want to set something up that's more like a client server system, what you can do is you can set up a Git repository on what I call the God computer. So it's still a Git version control system, but this system is accessible from the other computers. So same type of system, but in this case, each of the client computers can pull from the data that's in the computer. And they can push the computer the information back up. So this is a lot more like what we've done with Subversion. It just gives us the ability uh, to have our own uh, separate repositories. And the reason that that's important is each of these repositories can do their own branching and merging and rollbacks and whatever they need to do. To do. So uh, unlike uh, a version control system where uh, everything that we need to do you know, happens up here uh, with this main computer, down here I might have, you know, I might have my, my main trunk going along but I might go out and create a branch out here just for my own work and doing something and then merge it back in. And you know, C and, and A aren't ever going to see that work. It's just stuff that B's doing. Or I might publish it, you know, maybe it's a branch that we all need to work on. I could publish that uh, up into the God computer so that everybody sees that branch, but it's not necessary. Um, and this allows me to, you know, for example, do work, you know, if I've, if I've got work that I'm doing um, and I get pulled off and you know, somebody says, well, can you start working on this feature? I can go work on this feature over here. And then somebody says, well, could you fix this bug that we're back over here? Well, I can just switch back over here onto this branch, fix the bug, commit it, keep on going, and then switch back over here to the branch that I was working on and keep on going there. I don't have to even necessarily have two separate directories like we do with some version. I can just switch back and forth from branches. I can switch up and down to commit points. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it gives me a lot more flexibility.